Hello, fellow humans and planet Earth. It's Dr. Perry from Stop Chasing Pain coming at you for another Instagram TV show. And it's part of our series on hashtag quarantine strong. So we can come out stronger in the end. I'm going to talk about motor control and what that means. Give you a couple of cool things that you can do to influence that. So when I teach my workshops, I usually like to give this definition by Anne Shumway Cook, who's a neuroscientist who I tried my best to get on my podcast show, but uh, she retired. And I love the definition of what motor control is. So motor control involves the way in which the central nervous system organizes muscles into coordinated movements. And I highlighted a key word there, sensory. Sensory information, what type? All of them, yes. Uh, is used to select and control movement. And the key word there is select. That's your brain. And movement patterns are influenced by perceptions. And perceptions are key because that's your brain. So your brain will take in the sensory input that is delivered to it consciously and subconsciously and then it goes through this program of your life history how you interpret the world and things that have happened to you up to that point and then that determines after your perception how you are going to move or control movement that's why you can give a sensory input to two different people and they have a completely different outcome based on the sensory input because the motor control is determined by the perceptions. And guess what pain is? Pain is also perception. Pain is not an input signal. Pain is an output signal. So you can change pain by changing an influencing input, which is sensory input, but also how your brain interprets it, and then it gives you the output. And another way that I say motor control is this. Motor control is when you take mobility, which is the ability to move, and you take stability, which is the ability to resist movement. If you mix those two together and you get a nice combination of yin and yang and balance that is actually dependent on the environment that you're in and the task that you're asking you to do or the mindset that you're in, when you have mobility and stability controlled, that's motor control. So stability always precedes force production and that's really important for you to understand and I always tell people that Safety also means stability. So if you feel safe, then your nervous system will grant you strength, grant you range of motion, grant you power. And stabilization is needed in order to generate force. So actually, Sith Lord Vader did not say that. It's just a really cool picture. But Paul Check said that. And uh, he has a great analogy from that. It's like, it's impossible to shoot a cannon out of a canoe. The cannon has a lot of power, but it's not going to go very far or very accurate if you're in an unstable location like the boat. Or imagine trying to swing a golf club while standing in a boat. Probably ain't going to go that well. So you need that stabilization. The brain is predictive. That's really important for you to understand. So the brain takes in sensory information. And then it interprets the sensory information best based on your prior history. And then it's going to predict what comes next. So it has a, a, a default switch of been there, done that. It'll automatically just assume something. That's your assumptions based on prior experiences with it. So, for instance, if you have prior experience where bending over to touch your toes has hurt your back, it's probably a good estimation that your brain will predict when you bend over to touch your toes, that is probably going to hurt. Now, when the brain can't predict stuff, then it has to now react to things. And when it reacts to things, it's much more stressful. It's much more primal. It's much more first brain. It sits in the back of the head. That's brain stem survival, sympathetic, dominant, fight, flight, freeze, freak out, driven. So the one way you can improve movement is to improve 
the ability for the brain to predict what's coming next. How can it predict by what's coming next? Is to give it different sensory input. And that's the key. Not necessarily more sensory input because more isn't better, better is better. It needs different, not necessarily more because you can overstimulate the body as well, which happens all the time. So in order to help prediction in the brain, we have to give it more different sensory input. And we can increase what they call tactile acuity. What does tactile mean? That's touch. What does acuity mean? That means more accurate. So I can better uh, determine with accuracy where my body is in space and time, which can therefore what help me predict where I need to move next because I already know where I am. And you can stimulate uh, what they call Pacinian corpuscles or mechanoreceptors. And these are what we call body map receptors, kind of like a GPS, right? Imagine if you're typing into Google Maps and you want to know where to go. If you know where you're going, well, that's awesome. That's predictive. You're much more relaxed when you know where you're going. But what happens when you don't know where you're going? It's much more stressful because you don't know where you're going. It's uncertainty. So these receptors are primarily responsive to rapid pressure changes, so vibration, um, rubbing the skin really fast, giving a uh, tapping vibration to the skin, and that's stimulatory, and then that can help you with prediction. And I like to use some strategies to do that via taping. So I'm going to show you an area of the body that if you stimulate, it can help you move your head better, it can move your thoracic spine, which is your mid-back better, your shoulders better, everything. And then that top picture is basically an anatomical picture of where you would see that red strip going across that guy's neck. And that's the underlying fascial connection, the left side and the right side. And you can see, look at that fascial bridge, that uh, white in the center. Just look how magnificent that is. And we know that the fascia has a lot of sensory mechanoreceptors in it. So if I can stimulate that region, I'm going to deliver what? Sensory input to the body, which can better help it predict where you're going to move next, especially with your head and your shoulders. And the closer you get to the brain, the more stimulating it is to the brain. The closer you get to the brain, the more stimulating it is to the brain. All right. And so what you can do is you can do this taping application right there. You just put one strip down the left side, one strip down the right side, and you put a red one right over what they call C7T1 on that fascial bridge. And all you're going to do on this one is just bend your head forward and apply the tape on either side with no stretch to the tape. And I'll go over some specifics on that here in a moment and uh, let you see some suggestions on that C7T1 bridge. And you give it a shot. Okay? And you're also going to see in a moment uh, the, that thing on the back of the head there that's circled in black going down to the bottom where the yellow line is. That's called your nuchal ligament which is a very important ligament that actually gives the ability to control your head so you don't get bobble head when you walk. If you took, a, took your nuchal ligament away, you wouldn't be able to run without having your head flop side to side. And the yellow line at the bottom is pretty much where the tape would be going, but then I'm going to tell you on some of the 10 things that I recommend that you do that you can um, stimulate really, really high up on the back of the head near that big bone that we call your external occipital protuberance, or what I call in real human talk, the big bone at the top of your skull at the back. And that can be very, very helpful in helping you with motor control. So here are some tactics that you can do, what I call C7T1 tactics. Number one, no tension on the tape. So when you apply the tape, you just flex the head forward and then you lay the tape down with no extra tension, left side, right side, and in the middle. You can wear it for 24 to 72 hours to give you some nice support. You can take it off and you can reapply it again if you need to. Uh, I would rub the tape vigorously when you apply it because that activates the adhesive, that activates the glue, and then tap it to stimulate the pacinian. So after you rub it, when you rub it really, really fast, That'll activate the Pacinian corpus, and then I just want you to tap it, right? Just have to get slap in the upper trap, and then C7T1. That'll also stimulate the Pacinian corpuscles. And then rub some rock sauce over the tape for even more sensory stimulation. The rock sauce is like the heat sauce 
that puts them there and then that'll actually help the area feel pretty damn cool and warm but it'll also be sensory stimulation into the brain so you have a much better idea about where your traps are then make your strips longer down the back so if you want it you can take the strips all the way down to your lower back if you want to and then you're going to get more what more sensory stimulation into the brain so we start with the small one and then we can make it larger and use a vibration ball on the spot during the day. So if you have the ability to get like a vibration ball from trigger point therapy or something like that, you just put the vibration right on that spot at C7, T1 and off to the traps. And then that'll also give you some Pacinian corpuscle stimulation up to the brain. Uh, interlace your fingers and place them behind your head like um, you just got caught out and then they told you to put your hands up and press your head into your hands for isometrics for um, three sets of 10 second holds. So interlace your fingers, place them behind your head, and then press your head into your hands and your hand into your heads, and then breathe in and out through your nose, hold it for 10 seconds, and repeat three times. Uh, rub the back of the skull right below the big bump to hit the nuchal ligament. So go back to the picture and you can take a look at the picture. You go really, really up high and then rub right there for like 30 seconds. Look straight with your eyes and lock on a target at eye level and just move your head side to side, up and down slowly. So look straight, pick a spot on the wall, and then don't stop looking at it. And then slowly move your head left to right, left to right, left to right, like a pendulum. And then go up and down, up and down, up and down without losing contact with your eyes. And then that will actually start to give you stimulation of your vestibular system, which is your inner ear and your balance system. And that's a lot of sensory feedback to the brain. If you get really, really dizzy, then you slow it down or you stop and you only go back when you feel a little bit better. Alternate hot and cold packs because you can. So what you want to do is right at the bottom of the neck, just put some hot, then put some cold. You can alternate between the two. You can change how long you do it. You can do it on the left side of the trap. You can do heat. On the right side, you can do ice, and then you switch it up the next time. The reason being is because I'm getting a different sensory input into the body. So give some of those guys a shot um, and let me know how it goes. You can check out more of my work on StopChasingPain.com on my membership site that we have there called Mojo Pro. You can join and see many different levels. We have over 800 videos that we teach you lots of cool things. And we come on Facebook all the time in our private group. And you can see all of my other social media outlets below that you can resource right from StopChasingPain.com. From YouTube to Instagram to Twitter, Facebook, and of course, our podcast, Stop Chasing Pain, on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Much love, everybody. Stay safe. Stay strong. Stay positive. We'll get through it together. We'll see you tomorrow.